So Michigan State, in the fifth year of Joanne P. McCauley's reign, is going to the Final Four. That's it. It's in the books. Congratulations to Michigan State, co-champions of the season here, the Big Ten regular season. The Spartan Nation is unique and different, and the people that sit in those stands and uh, cheer our teams on, our athletes on, I think they have a level of expectation. I think it's blue collar, I think it's the, the champion inside them, the will to win, um, blue collar toughness, that kind of thing. So I, I mean, I hope that, you know, when kids put this uniform on that it means everything to them. And uh, the front of the jersey is more important than the back, as they say. Strong, independent women, um, fierce, uh, integrity, to be a Michigan State Spartan means everything to me. As a coach, I mean, she just really wants the best for all of us, the best for all of her players. She wants us to be tough. She's so competitive herself, and she uh, really tries to bring that out of all of us, you know, that competitive nature um, on the court. But off the court, I mean, she's like a second mom to me. Coach is all about defense, for sure. Uh, she uh, definitely like, likes to get up into people and be aggressive and uh, you know she can be really intense sometimes but I like that you know I, I like when she uh, gets after us because it motivates us. April Wilson spins in the lane, has to back it out, AG from behind rips the ball away and gives it to Jankoska. Great defense. Jankoska up to Bell, up with the right hand and lays it home. Tartar drives, working on AG. She gets blocked by Brandy AG on a fall away jumper left of the lane. Nice defense to the free throw line. Haynes Overton on the drive, gets blocked by Brandy Ag again. I would definitely say the defense, defense and um, toughness. I think physicality, that kind of thing. I think when people play us, they know it. And we've kind of marked ourselves a little bit as that. And you ask around the league and they'll definitely say that Michigan State's usually the most physically tough and um, defensive team. That's the side of the ball you can dictate the most. You, you can't always control if your shot's going to go in or you're having a good offensive night. Sometimes the ball just doesn't go in. Um, but I think the defensive side of the ball is something we pride ourselves on. Two on one. Bounce pass to Tellisford inside. She gets blocked by Taya Reimer, who was hustling back the other way. Missed it short. Ball loose on the deck. Picked up by Taylor. Forces it up. Off the glass and in. Count the bucket and the foul. When you think about Michigan State women's basketball, Especially under Coach Merchant, it's been like really hard-nosed, defensive, um, tough teams. That's something that Coach Merchant just really stresses. I mean, just to her core, that's kind of what she is as a coach, a defensive coach. It's really special to think, you know, you, you go out there in the practice gym every day and you see all those All-Americans hanging up there. and. You know, for me to be able to, I, have, I played with Ariel and Tori, uh, two WNBA picks, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of legacy that goes with the Spartan uniform, and I wear it with pride. Dan Costco gets a hug from Gussert and a standing ovation. She's become the program's all-time leading scorer and has scored 42 tonight. With the ninth pick in the 2017 WNBA draft, the Chicago Sky select Tori Jankowska from Michigan State University. I don't think anybody's had a better senior campaign um, than, than Tori Jankowska in the country. I mean, the kid wasn't on any national radar and just literally played her way into a top 10 draft pick. You know, she wasn't because um, of Ariel and all that Ariel was. I don't think people really appreciated what Tori could do and her mental toughness. Now 11 to shoot, Jankoska step back topside three, buries it, my goodness, Jankoska's been on fire all day. Out to Reimer, then Jankoska, NBA three, bam! It's always tough when you lose somebody that's so important to your team and that is such a huge part of the, you know, the makeup, the chemistry, all of that stuff, so. And we're still trying to kind of figure out that identity, you know, not having Tori who's, you know, especially in tough games, the person that we can kind of lean on, the, the person that we know is going to make plays. So I think that that's something that we're still trying to figure out. 
Last year we, we depended on Tori a lot and this year we, we kind of wanted to share that role, you know, split it out between a bunch of people because we feel like a lot of people can score on this team and, um, you know, we wanted to do that, try to help balance the scoring and that way we didn't have to depend on one person. Bounce pass to Ag, lays it up, go to the foul. Top of the key, hesitation dribble into the lane, to the rack, lays it up, and in. Bounce pass to Allen, to the rack with the right hand, lays it in easy. Kicked out to the left corner, Cooks tries again, and knocks it down. That's where I think this team is, is looking for someone to emerge. We have some, some good vocal leaders, but are you physically doing what you need to do to be, to earn that kind of street credibility, I guess. You know, every leader has to lead themselves first in order to lead many, but if you're kind of inconsistent in how you lead yourself from an action base on game night, then it makes it real difficult for people to follow. So I would say, you know, that's, that's part of life, you know, that, that if you want to be a really good leader, you got to do both. You know, you got to be able to verbalize it and have a commanding presence vocally, but you have to show up night in and night out and be consistent. Um, and that's what this team, I think, is struggling a little bit, and that's what you get when you play a lot of people. You know, I think the roles kind of get a little blurred at times, and we're trying to figure out. We've always had sort of the alpha dog, whether it be Ariel and Tori on the same team or just Tori. Last year, Coach was worried about our conditioning. And this, this summer, we found embrace it, or that motto, because we wanted to embrace the conditioning, embrace the failure, embrace the, the positives, the success. We wanted to, you know, all the mornings that uh, we dreaded, we wanted to just embrace it. That way, instead of looking at it as a negative, like, oh, I have to go do this. No, you know, it's positive. Like, we get to be here. We get to be at Michigan State finally. I think it started from a place of like they had to work really, really hard in the off season uh, from a conditioning standpoint. And so they, you know, it's just like, we gotta do this, so we might as well embrace it. And I think that's sort of where it started and now it's sort of, it's carried over. Okay, listen up, let's go, listen up right now. We're all right, take a deep breath right now, okay? Yeah, we're gonna get into you a little bit, but this is the start, we're gonna get into it, all right? Hey, go. what's gonna help us? When you're tired on the sideline, you gotta give energy. It's dead quiet every time they're running that. Yeah. Let's go. Everybody Fly, come. Embrace it. One, two, three. Embrace it. Early on, it was just kind of a struggle for a lot of us, and we came together and we were like, okay, we know that this team is talented. We know that we have a lot of things that we can do, but we just need to embrace it. We need to embrace the everyday struggle, getting in, lifting, running, getting extra shots in the gym film study, all of the extra things that you don't always think about when you just think about playing basketball, all of the extra things that it takes to make you a great team instead of just a, a good team, an average team. So we just thought, okay, let's start this early, like embrace it. We're gonna say it all the time. We're gonna like pound it into our heads so that we know that like that's what we have to do to take us to the next level. You know, I think we're gonna shock a lot of people. You know, I, you know, we've had a couple games here where we let slip through our fingers, uh, but we're just getting started and I have a lot of faith in my teammates and uh, I think it's going to be a really great season. Back home following a disappointing loss in South Bend, Michigan State tries to right the ship against the University of Rhode Island Rams. Michigan State coming in holding a 5-3 and three record and Rhode Island entering the contest to just 1-7 and seven so far this season. Ross and Cooks are at center court as we prepare for the tip-off between Michigan State and Rhode Island. The ball is tossed in the air. The tip is won by the Spartans. And here we go from the Breslin Center on this Saturday afternoon. That bounces around. No good, but Sydney Cooks with an offensive rebound. Turnaround jumper is good in the middle of the lane. Third time's the charm for the Spartans to start the ball game. Now Gustard pumps the three, bounces it into Allen, makes the catch, and finishes on the right side with the right hand. That was smooth. Holly with the steal in the backcourt. She's by herself in transition and lays it up and in. Terrific defense by Jay Colley and it turns into an easy two. 7.40 to play first quarter. Over to McCutcheon on the left wing. A deep three ball. Got it. Eight to shoot. Out to McCutcheon at the top. Seven into the post. Cooks five. A hook shot is up and in off the window. Cynthia Holly on the right wing. Tossed into the corner. McCutcheon a three. Got it. Darren McCutcheon's third three of the first half. Three seconds left in the second quarter. The inbounds pass tip, and that's how the first half comes to a close. 
The Spartans lead 40 to 18 as we're getting set to come out of halftime tonight. Shea Cauley has the rebound. She tries to push the tempo into the offensive zone. Bounce to Sydney Cooks, and she lays it in. Oberg throws it in, and it's knocked away by Shea Cauley. She's all by herself to the rack in transition and lays it in with the left hand. Second time she's done that today. Six to shoot. Screeder to the elbow, four to shoot. Toss up to the right wing, tipped into the backcourt. Cauley wins the foot race to the basketball and then lays it in easy. triumph for Michigan State. They improve to six and three. Rhode Island falls to one and eight. We had 21 assists on 31 buckets. And what didn't we take a ton of? Jump shots and threes. Where did we score our points? And our fast break and on our defense. So all of those things made a big difference, all right? Embrace my three, one, two, three, embrace it. Great crowd today, despite the five, six, so soon to be seven inches of snow outside. But uh, I appreciate you guys all coming out today. And we're going to have a lot of interviews. We're going to be able to talk to a lot of the different girls today throughout the show. So should be a lot of fun. And we can say hello now to head coach Susie Merchant. Hello. Ooh, hi. Wow. Hi, everybody. Happy holidays. We get the whole team up now. They're going to stand up uh, in front of the, our main table here at Reno's, and uh, they're going to be able to perform a, a little jingle for us for the rest of the crowd that is here today. Apparently, we've got Jingle Bell Rock coming from our MSU <laughs> women's basketball team. 